Alright, our first time ever reading Seven and a Half Tons of Steel. A story that um, relates to Patriot Day today and one I think you'll find very beautiful. There is a ship, a Navy ship. It is called the USS New York. It is big like other Navy ships and it sails like other Navy ships. But there is something different, something special about the USS New York. On September 11th, 2001, clouds of smoke billowed in the clear blue sky. The World Trade Center towers came down. Almost 3,000 people lost their lives. In the days after the towers collapsed, people brought flowers and photographs, stuffed animals and pictures drawn with crayon. They lit candles and left handwritten notes to decorate a place now called Ground Zero. For weeks and months afterward, people cleared away metal and stone from Ground Zero. One truck carried a beam made of steel from New York to a foundry in Louisiana. Workers heated the beam to a high, high temperature and steel melted into liquid. Molten metal, bright orange and fiery red, was poured into a mold. It took four days to cool. That's amazing. Wow, can you imagine something that hot taking four days to cool down? Seven and a half tons of steel. Let's throw this to you. Seven and a half tons of steel, which had once been a beam in the World Trade Center, was now the bow of a Navy ship. Chippers and grinders, painters and polishers worked on it for months. Once a beam, but now a bow, it was taken to a shipyard in the city of New Orleans. Shipbuilders, engineers, electricians, mechanics, welders, carpenters, painters, and plumbers worked together to build the USS New York. And I want to stop right here for just a minute. We talked today about the expert in anything was once a beginner. And here these people are building this huge ship, one that's built from beams that fell from the Twin Towers. And those shipbuilders, engineers, electricians, mechanics, welders, carpenters, painters, and plumbers, there's no way that when they started they were experts. They were beginners when they started and they became experts and now they're getting to work on something like this. Your parents are experts. Your grandparents are experts at what they do. And they were all once beginners. Shipbuilders stopped their work and came to watch. Draped in an American flag, seven and a half tons of steel were lifted by a crane and welded into place on the USS New York. And the bow is the front part of the ship that leads the way. I wonder if that is um, the type of imagery they want to give. Look at that. Out in the ocean, a storm started to swirl. We know what the kind of storm that is. That's the eye of a hurricane, isn't it? Indeed. Out in the ocean, a storm started to swirl, wind twisted, water churned. Hurricane Katrina slammed into New Orleans. Levees broke, homes flooded, and businesses were swept away. Many shipbuilders lost their homes. They could not work on the USS New York until Camp Katrina was built. Now the workers had a place to live they could continue building the ship. Finally, the USS New York was finished. 
but the mighty ship still sat on dry land, inch by inch, using skids, grease, and hydraulic lifts, the ship was put into the water. It was the biggest moving object on earth that day. Look at that. That's amazing. And all the work they had to go into just moving that from dry land to get seven tons, seven tons of steel just in the front of it. That's not the whole ship. You might want to be an expert in research. How much does a Navy ship weigh? All kinds of further questions coming to our mind as we listen to the story. The ship sailed down the Mississippi into the Gulf of Mexico and out into the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean. The USS New York was going home. Isn't that beautiful? It's absolutely beautiful. The USS New York sailed past the Statue of Liberty and came to a stop across from Ground Zero. And oh, it says it next, sorry. The USS New York sailed past the Statue of Liberty and came to a stop across from Ground Zero, the site where the World Trade Center towers once stood. There was silence on the water. There was silence on the land. Then the silence was broken by a 21-gun salute, which is a very high military honor, an act of reverence, an act of esteem, an act of respect. When the ceremony ended, the warship set out to do its job at sea. On September 11th, 2011, the 10th anniversary of the collapse of the World Trade Center Towers, the USS New York returned home. The men and women of the United States military services lined the rails of the ship. People came from all over the country and around the world to see the ship that bore the crest. Never forget. The USS New York is part of our American history. Wherever it sails the high seas, its bow cuts the water. Seven and a half tons of steel lead the way. There is so much you can infer from that. That America might get beat down, but you can't stop her. Because she'll continue to lead. She'll continue to be a great nation no matter what comes our way. So, this is a beautiful book seven and a half tons of steel. And so I hope that as you write, you're going to write a book response. What did this story make you think of? What questions came to your mind as we read it? What else might you want to learn having learned a little bit about this book? So you'll do a book talk, a book response for me, and I look forward to seeing what literary discussion we have together. And let's remember 9-11 Patriot Day. Bye-bye.